centuries, mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more. From health and holistic healing to the supernatural, we aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today we're bringing in this amazing woman named Morgan who does animal communication. And I know people that have pets, animals are near and dear to our hearts. And, you know, uh, we really look at how can we communicate with these little beautiful tiny beings on an even deeper level than just observing Uh, each other's behavior. Now, Morgan does that, and she teaches other people how to do that and has studied that to actually get in and to be able to communicate with another animal using the power of your mind and the power of their mind. So welcome to today's podcast. Welcome, Morgan. Thank you, Christina. So do you want to share a little bit about yourself? Certainly. So how I started with animal communication is kind of a long road. Um, I've always been intuitive with animals ever since I was a young girl. Um, I've always been able to connect with them in a very spiritual sense. Um, I've always been able to gather kind of who they are as a soul, as well as some of their personality traits from my own intuition. And then as I grew up, I've done a ton of animal rescue. I've done trap near return for feral cats. I've done activism. I've done adoptions. I've done publicity events for animal organizations. I've done writing for animal organizations, name it. I've pretty much done it on the animal, <laughs> in the animal realm. And then in 2014, I discovered online the Gurney Institute of Animal Communication, which the director of animal communication there, her name is Carol Gurney, and she's been doing this program for quite a while now where you can get certified to become an animal communicator. Um, And it's real stuff. So I took an animal introductory, introduction to animal communication class, and it was wonderful. I had a great connection with another partner's animal via a photo, and ever since then, I've been taking clients and um, doing meetups for animal communication to teach others how to communicate with animals as well, and I just love it. It's my soul path. I love that. And and what what does it take to communicate with an animal? Like, you know, what's your process? And, you know, let's uh, let's take people through this a little bit. Okay. So I use two methods to communicate with an animal. I first use my intuition, which you could say is your gut feeling. All of us have a gut feeling. Um, it kind of leads us in the direction of the day. It leads us through life. Um, and... I also use what I've learned from the Institute, which is telepathy to communicate with animals, which is a direct line of communication between myself and an animal. Um, It's basically a transference of um, information. So kind of how it works is sometimes I meditate before I do an animal communication. Now I'm able to tap in pretty quickly And as you learn animal communication, when I first started doing it, it would come in through dialogue. So, for instance, the dog could say, I like to play. And that that makes sense because English was my major in college, and I'm a writer myself as well. So usually the communication comes in via your strength. So your um, sense that's your strength. So basically, um, it came in through dialogue first, and then it came in through images. So I would see the dog would show me a blue ball that they love to play at their house or something like that. But it comes through as dialogue, images, thoughts, feelings, smells, and... um, And physical sensations as well. 
So I can gather how an animal is feeling in their body as well. Okay. So it's very cool. And, and what would you say, like, would be the purpose of somebody going and wanting, like, what kind of people seek you out? Okay. So the, the people that seek me out are two types of people. Either people that are interested in just connecting on a deeper level with their animal and they want to know badly what their animal's thinking and feeling, which, of course, all of us want to know, I would think. <laughs> and the other type of clients I have are clients that they may have either a physical issue with their animal or a behavioral issue with their animal that they need rectified and fixed. Okay. So the first type of client, um, I usually, what I do is I take cases for um, physical and behavioral issues, as well as um, death and dying, animals that are either are dying or have passed on, as well as past lives of animals, which I'm fascinated with. Um, so basically, um, I'll do a communication for someone. I'll either have a photo of their animal and do it uh, remotely, or I will go to their home and actually have a communication with them in person with their animal. Okay. So you can do things remotely. You can tap in that way. Uh, do you need a picture? Do you need just the animal's name? Like, how does it work? Yes. Yeah, so usually, thank you for asking that, Christina. <laughs> um, usually I do have a photo of the animal, and I communicate that way. And usually how I start is I introduce myself to the animal. Let's say the animal's name is Fluffy the dog. I say, hi, Fluffy, my name's Morgan, and I communicate with animals. Would it be okay if I communicated with you today? And because you always want to be cordial with an animal just like you would a human. Okay. Um, so if they're ready to talk, we do the communication. And I mean, basically every time they're ready to talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what kind of things do they share? Like, what are this, what are some of the most interesting things that you've had animals share? Um, there was one time um, I did an event for Stray Cat Alliance, which is a cat rescue organization in Los Angeles. And I was their animal communicator there. And there was another woman there that had a cat that she was living with in an old home, like their previous home. The cat was totally fine. Everything was fine, behaving well. And then they moved into this new home. And soon after they moved into the new home, this cat started peeing in the house. Mm -hmm. So it turns out that this cat was peeing in the house because there's a bush outside of their house that this cat can smell and cannot stand the smell of this bush and was saying, you need to cut it down. I can't stand this bush. And if that happens, I'll stop peeing. So did they, so did they cut down the bush? Yeah. And did the cat stop peeing? Yeah. And the thing, and the thing <laughs> is, the thing is that they let their cat in and out of the house. So they let their cat walk outside and the cat will come in. But the cat does go to the bathroom inside in, in the litter box. Um that's what the cat's supposed to do. So the cat, what's funny is, is that it was two women that were living together. I think they were sisters. And one of the sisters was like, this bush smells, I can't stand it. I don't like it. You know, we need to get rid of it. And the other sister was like, it's no problem. Let's leave it. And it turns out that, you know, this cat didn't like this bush either. And Oftentimes, um, <laughs> oftentimes when you're the human of an animal, when the animal's your animal, you're already communicating with them. Like this woman and her cat shared this mutual feeling about the smell of this bush, and they both wanted it gone. <laughs> so, yeah, but that, that's just that's you know amazing <laughs> and so so wonderful to me that that after that happened, they took down the bush. The cat, the cat just, was fine. It stopped peeing. So sometimes it's a random thing. Sometimes you know it could be that the litter box is in a, the wrong location in the house, and once you move it, behaviors changed. Wow. 
Because they have needs like we do, and we want things a specific way. So they want things a specific way, too. And then they don't know how to get it across to us, and so they <laughs> they act like little kids in a way. Like, oh, well, then I'm going to get mad and pee on your pillow. <laughs> exactly. 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 They'll do, they'll do that. They can do that, I guess. What other interesting things? I mean, that's just so fascinating. <clears throat> well, I can tell you about the first communication I have with an animal, which was okay. really wonderful, which opened my whole world up to this. Um, I had a partner, and she had a few dogs. I didn't know that. I, I was only communicating with one dog, and it was this white dog. And I had a photo of this white dog. And when I was doing the communication at the institute there, um, this dog took me through this woman's from um, Thailand, so she lives in Bangkok. So she flew out to, to do this animal communication course, which is pretty amazing. Um, so basically, this, this dog welcomed me. It was very visual for me, this one. Um, and there was some dialogue. But this white dog took me into the home, and immediately I saw hardwood flooring. And I saw a bedroom on either side of the house. The kitchen was in the back left, and to the back right... There was kind of a dining area and a sliding glass door to a patio with a lime green curtain. And it was very breezy and very moist, like humid. And I could feel all these things. Turns out the white dog was very excited, which was accurate. He was bouncing up and down. He likes to kind of pop up and down. And I was right about that. But this white dog ended up telling me, that he was concerned about another dog that he lives with. And he said, I need you to help this dog. So not only was I able to communicate with one animal, I was able to communicate with two animals in, this, in the same communication, which was totally unexpected. So I go over to this other dog. This dog looks like a German Shepherd, and this dog is very sad. Um, had a bad experience when it was young. Very horrifying experience, unfortunately. And she's just kind of filled with some fear. So I reassured her that she's, you know, going to be okay and that her owner will take care of her and I will talk to her owner about talking to her about what she needs to get past this. So it turns out, um, without getting into all the details, but it turns out that when I spoke with my partner and we exchanged communications because she communicated with my cat, um, it turns out that not only does she, was I right about the white dog and the fact that he likes to pop around and he's all concerned about this other German Shepherd, she does have a German Shepherd, and she showed me a photo of him, and it looked exactly like this dog that I was communicating with, and it turns out, unfortunately, um, this dog, uh, his mother was used in some sort of sacrifice, religious sacrifice. So it's very sad. Um, but I was just so amazed that I was able to communicate with not just one animal, but two animals in the same communication. And I actually was able to get the layout of her apartment as well as the lime green curtains correct. Wow. Um, so I knew this was real. That's amazing. That's, <laughs> since then you've been doing it. <laughs> and since then I've been doing it, yeah. Now, what about for other resolutions? Like, have you, you found lost animals at all? Or, you know, does uh, this work for animals that are lost? That you can help find them? Or, you know, I'm just thinking of other things. Yes, yes. It does work for lost animals. And I have done studying on lost animals. Meaning I did do cases for the Institute for Lost Animals. Um, I don't specify, perf um, I don't specialize, specialize, sorry, I don't specialize in lost animals myself, but there are people at the Institute that do. Okay. So I have gotten, you know, I have done cases with, with lost animals. Okay. With various, various luck. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, there's so much subject to it, right? Because if you're communicating and they're lost and they're like... Oh, I see, I see this tree. It's like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. The thing about lost animals is that they can't say, hey, I'm on 
Patriot Street, uh, you know, the cross street is 8th. <laughs> so they can't say that. They can just describe the area and you just keep delving deeper into it. Can you give me more descriptions? Can you give me more details? Can you show me the path that you took from where you were and where you are now? Yeah. And a lot of times doing lost animal cases as well, you have to tell the animal to please stay put. Because if they move, then, you know, what you're communicating to the client could have shifted in that time. Yeah. You know, because they can go somewhere else. Um, So, yes, lost animals are very, it's great to be able to do lost animals. But, and so... With the, going back a, uh, a few steps here, when you're, when you're able to communicate with an animal and get what they need, you know, um, what would you say the majority of a behavior shift, uh, like, like on a percentage, like basis, like when, it, when an animal feels that they have the clarity of the communication and that, that aspect, whether it's the litter box being moved, whether it's the bush being cut down, whether it's the owner interacting with the animal in a different way, uh, does, that, does that solve the issues and the problems that were being presented the majority of the time? Yes. So how that works is it's teamwork, basically. So the animal will communicate to me, you know... Um, I need to be let out once a day and I want to go to the bathroom near this rock, let's say. Let's say that's what the animal wants. So it's up to the owner, and I always um, make this known, it's up to the owner to be consistent Mm -hmm. with this new plan or what the animal wants that the owner can actually do. Okay. So first off, when I do a communication an animal may say a few things that the animal may need. And I always ask my clients, is this something that's feasible for you? And if it is, then I say, okay, then this is your action plan. I always give my clients an action plan. Whereas, you know, step one, step two, step three, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and as long as they're consistent with this action plan, it's it can be a 100% turnaround for the okay. animal. But if, if they're inconsistent then they can fall back into what behavior they were doing. Now, what about, you just said something that that sparked a curiosity in me. Uh, What if it's something that's not feasible? Are you able to communicate the reasons why to the animal so they understand? Like, let's say if it's like a situation where an animal's upset that they move somewhere. And, or something and but it's not or like let's say in the case with this this bush what if they didn't own the property and they can't cut it down you know it's not legally theirs to cut down you know is is there a way to communicate that with an animal so that they they can have a better state of peace because there's it just like in humans or kids or animals I mean there's the wants needs and desires of somebody but then there's also Uh, the acceptance of the things that maybe aren't feasible. Exactly. So that's a good question, Christina. There is a way to, for me to communicate with an animal if something is not feasible that they want or it's something that's not really tangible, right? Like you can't hold on to it. It's not about a litter box. It's something uh, different than that. So... What I would do is I would communicate with the animal and I would say, let's say it's about the bush that can't be cut down because it's not legal for them to cut down. I would say, you know, unfortunately, it's not okay to cut this bush down because someone else owns it. You know, your your human doesn't own it. Is there anything else that I can do for you that would make you feel better? They would make you change this. They would allow you the opportunity to change this behavior. And sometimes, oftentimes, depending, because all animals have different personalities. So some, obviously, like humans, are more open than others, Mm -hmm. you know. So depending on the animal, I just dig deep enough to get to the root of the issue and then solve it that way. So it could be that, you know, and sometimes... Sometimes what I'll also do is I'll add other modalities, 
you know, for my clients to utilize in their action plans. So let's say um, this family adopted an animal that's been abused, Mm -hmm. that's unfortunately just very scared and hides a lot, um, gets anxious. I may recommend some um, peace and calming essential oil to... To you to use on the animal, and you just put it down the flank, down the back, um, and that could really help. Sometimes, um, sometimes animals. A lot of times, animals just need quiet time with their human, with their person, where everything's quiet, and both of you are present to one another, and they feel that they're in a trusting environment, and they can just be themselves. Um, a lot of, you know, animals that have been abused, which I've done a lot of work with animals that have been abused, need that time. Um, so that's not really tangible, but it's something that, um, it could be that, that the, that the animal really needs, you know. So there's always a way of going deeper and animals are very, um, I always like to say they're far surpassed than humans. Um, So they understand things like death, love, uh, trust, you know, these these big things um, in life a lot softer than humans do, I've noticed. Um, Mm. Humans are very attached to the physical. Like, we're very attached to, can I, is it tangible? Can I touch it? Can I feel it? You know, that's the way I connect. And with animals, they just know love. They just know, they're, they're easy with the process of dying as well, which is always, um, nice for my clients to know that when, their animal passes on, there's no hate, there's no, you shouldn't have put me down, there's no, you know, whatever it may be, there's no animosity, there's no fear, they just accept and they allow and they know that this is the natural progression, you know, the natural part of life. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. (laughs) What else would you like to share about animal communication? Um, Well, I will read out of... um, Carol Gurney, the director of the Institute, she has a book called The Language of Animals. Okay. Seven Steps to Communicating with Animals. So um, I'll read this one short paragraph out of here. Um, And it basically just explains how, what it's like to connect with an animal. And I found it really profound and very nice. So I'll read it here. It says, here's how I experienced connecting with an animal. First, I focus my intention on the animal, which is mental. I feel a strong sensation in my heart, which is physical. And I feel warm and full of love, which is emotional. It's as if the doors of my heart begin to open, which is spiritual. And once they do, I feel that the animal engages with me in the same way. We connect heart to heart. So it's really, first of all, it's a great program, but secondly, that's what it is. When you're communicating with an animal, it it literally is a heart-to-heart communication. You're talking with them um, on a soul level, and it's really, it's just really wonderful because Animals are, they're, they're like humans in the fact that they all have different personalities. They all want a job in life. Mm. They all want something that they can do, just like we want something that we want to do, whether it's opening up our own business or whatever it may be. Animals are the same way. Sometimes they just want to be a healer to their human. <laughs> you know? So, Aww. that's really fun. What about... Um... How do you feel about doing an animal communication right now? Oh, so sorry. Sure. Would that be something that translates over the 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 the, the podcast? I think it could. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so so I always talk. I have two, so you can pick one. <laughs> okay. You can, you can pick either Piggy or Chewy. <laughs> okay. 
Well, why don't you just show me a photo of whoever you'd like me to communicate with? Well, which one are you feeling? Piggy or Chewy? I'll show you a picture of whomever. Chewy. All right. Here we go. This was taken a couple days ago. Okay. I think it's a... Uh, we're hearing a lot about it, so why don't we see you in action? <laughs> okay. What would you like me to ask, Chewy? Um, you had one question. What would it be? I have one question. Okay. So he is petrified walking around our new place. And, um, like, I can't get him to walk even. We, we recently moved downtown, and... Uh, yeah, I can't get him to even walk down the block. So maybe there could be some insight on that. <laughs> okay. But he loves walking in nature and in the mountains and hiking. He's good at that. Just just walking to go potty is a nightmare. Okay. <laughs> and this is a new behavior. Yeah, but it's a new new place. We've been new living place. there for about six, seven months now and we used to live by a horse ranch on a quiet private street, so it's a little mm, different. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so what I'll do, Christina, is I'll just take a couple minutes in silence Okay. while I can do the communication, and then I'll come together with you to deliver the communication. Sounds good. Okay. So, all right. So you, uh, if we, I had her do a little bit of silence, and uh, or she did a little bit of silence. I didn't have her do anything, and um, she tapped into Chewy's picture and energy. So Morgan, I'm I'm excited to hear what came up. <laughs> yes, Christina. So um, what I'll do is I'll just I'll take you through the communication, and then you can feel free to when I pause to validate anything that I'm telling you, whether it's correct or not. Okay. Um, so what I was getting from Chewy, just a general sense of his personality, was that he's definitely up to it. He's an instigator. Okay. And um, he's friendly. He's open to talking. And he definitely wants and loves having friends, mm-hmm. mostly in the form of people. Yeah. Would you say that's correct? Yeah, he's a big bundle of love. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, and I asked him, you know, I communicated to him that you're concerned because he seems petrified uh, when you walk down the block, when you take him on walks in your new place. Um, what he was showing me was, um, initially what he was showing me was, a tall man in a black suit, and he's very tall, like way, like probably 6'4". I mean, this guy's really tall. Maybe he's a neighbor. Um, He's seen this man out your door. He has brown hair. Um, And I think it's not the man himself that he's bad or anything like that. It's just the fact that he's so tall Hmm. um, that kind of, Scares Chewy a little bit. Um, have you seen? No, but they're, they're, well, I mean, there's, so we have doormen, and so, mm. but they give him puppy treats every time he comes in, so he's pretty friendly with them. He okay. gets excited. Okay, okay. But they wear black suits. <laughs> they wear black suits, okay. There might be one that, like I said, it's not that he dislikes this man, but he's just intimidated with the with the height a little bit, so okay. he's a little unsure. Um, he was communicating to me that he feels that the horse ranch was very peaceful. He likes to be immersed in nature, and it's very grounding and exciting for him. Um, would you say that that's yeah accurate? Yeah. yeah. Anything to do with hiking outdoors, he loves. Yeah, that's that's kind of his his realm. Um, I do, he was um, communicating to me, I was hearing doors shut and slam, so within, do you live like in an apartment or a condo? Uh, A condo, yeah. A condo, okay, so you do have neighbors that are close to you? Okay, so he was hearing the the doors shut and open a lot, Um, so that's a little startling to him. Um, Do you live in a white building? White colored? 
Uh, there's a lot of white to it. It's more cement color. Okay, okay. I'm seeing, like, what I saw was kind of like what you said, like a cement walkway, but the building is white. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, And I always, I asked um, Chewy, you know, what can Christina do to help you? Um, He said, I want mommy to hold me until I get to the grass. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, um, what I was getting from him is that this will allow him to feel safer, um, because he loves being held by you so much that I think if you, if you carry him down, you know, the stairs down to where the grass is and then set him in the grass, then he'll be like, okay, I'm in the earth now, which is what he likes, right? What he trusts. Um, <laughs> And then um, what would also be useful, Christina, which I always tell my clients to, whenever you make a big move, even if you're just going to work for eight hours a day, a really good exercise, which is a great tip for everyone listening here, um, is to sit with your animal just before you leave, um, get quiet with them, and just, and you can say this out loud, you can just say it in your head or out loud, um, but say, you know, uh, Chewy is an example. Chewy, we're going to be moving. Put the visual of where you're moving to in your head, and Chewy will pick up on that and say, okay, this is what my life's going to be now. Mm -hmm. I know that this change is coming because mom showed me. Mm -hmm. Um, And let him know kind of the timeline on that. This is happening in two weeks. I'll let you know. Okay. Um, And... Also, it's just a side thing, you know, if people are listening now, if when you go to work, it's good to say to your animal, I'm going to work, but I will be back. Mm -hmm. And you can just do, give your animal a visual of, of yourself entering the house and greeting your animal again. And that'll assure your animal that my mom's not leaving forever. She's coming back in a few hours. (laughs) Um, So it's really great to do with your animals. So it might be good for you to talk to Chewy and just say, I have a feeling that you told him you were moving. Yeah, and I I talk to him pretty regularly. It's just, yeah, the the fear. Yeah, I think it, I got the sense that Chewy knew that he was moving. Because you tell them, like, okay, we're going to do this. We're moving now. This is what we're doing. But I think, you know, what he needed was just that visual, like, that this is where we're moving to. This is how my life's going to change. Yeah. Kind of a thing. Um. So you can, when you go home, you can talk to him about that and just say, you know, we left this place, now we're in this place, and this is our life now. But, you know, you can trust me, I'll hold you before we get to the grass for your walks. <laughs> and it'll take time, but he'll, he'll, um, he'll acclimate. Um, and also, it's always good to use the peace and calming essential oil. Mm-hmm. Um, if that from young living essential oils, okay. if you wanted to use that, if you use essential oils, um, and then just another question, Christina, that I always like to ask for my clients, cause I think it's special. Um, I asked Chewy, you know, how do you show Christina love? Aww. How do you do it specifically? Um, and he said, Oh, we snuggle and I burrow my head. <laughs> so he was showing me a visual of you holding him and he kind of like nudges your chin. And basically why he does that is he wants to get deeper into the snuggle. Oh, what a does cute. Does he do that? Yeah. yeah, he kind of does like this <laughs> nudging thing. Very cute. Yeah. Aww. Well, Christina, that was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Chewy thanks you too. And, uh... Yeah, thank you for being on, and I, mean, I love that you gave people a couple tips and things of what they can do. I, I know personally, like, it makes all the difference in the world when I talk to uh, Piggy and Chewy, and I let them know if I'm going to work or not, you know, um, and they feel so much better. They don't even try to come to the door. They, like, just zen out, you know? Yeah, they can, they can relax. That's totally true, Christina. I've, I have a cat at home who's actually 21 years old. Her name's Snoopy. She still gets around, like, as if she was five. Thank God. 
But um, before I started doing the animal communication, I'd just go to work. I'd do my thing, and I'd come home. And when I got home, she'd be on the door meowing, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> and then once I started doing the animal communication, I just I tell her every day, like I told her before I came here, I'm leaving, I'll be back in an hour. I visualize it, and she is just chilling in her bed when I get home. <laughs> so she's very relaxed. So it's really important to do that with your animals and it'll lessen a lot of stress for them. So never, never, never doubt how much a little bit of verbal and mental communication can impact, right? You yes, because we just assume our animals don't understand that, but they do. Yeah. They understand us so well. Probably better than we understand they, ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> they're such profound beings. So if we just give them a little communication, they're like, all right, got it. Awesome. Where can people find you, Morgan? They can find me at my website, which is morganmelick.com. That's M-O-R-G-A-N-M-E-L-L-I-C-K.com. Mind you, my website is a little under construction, but you can feel free to contact me there, and I can take an animal communication. And also, I'm going to throw out there that since you mentioned before, you do things versus over meetups, maybe look for if... uh, if there's a, a meetup coming up and she does classes here at Liberate, you know, every couple months or so we'll do one too. So, yes, yes, you know. I have done I've done uh, classes here at Liberate as well, which I love. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And if everybody, if you enjoyed this, uh, please rate us. It helps other people find us. Uh, leaving a comment. Uh, of course, we'll take the stars, we'll take five stars, we'll take whatever you got, but uh, if you take a moment to actually write some feedback in, uh, it will help uh, iTunes rate us a little bit better. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Christina. Until next time. <laughs>